Good day and welcome to Code Escuela. You might have noticed that all of our tasks disappear every time we start and stop our app. In this session, we'll persist our task in a database using Entity Framework Core and Microsoft SQL Server so that our task doesn't get lost. Before proceeding, we will need to download and install first the Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition to our local machine. This will be the database provider that we will use to persist the data of our application. I have added the link to the download page in the description section of this video. Now we will start uh, setting up our database and table. So to do that, let's uh, go to view and click SQL Server Object Explorer. Okay. This is where we can access and uh, connect to our SQL Server database. So to connect, let's click this button, Add SQL Server. So just select. So in this case, I have a, already a local installation of SQL Express Server. And then specify your uh, authentication method. So in this case, I have already a uh, account or access credentials for my SQL Server uh, instance so i'll select sql server authentication this is my uh, username and password okay and then click connect and now once we're connected we will start creating our database okay so since uh, we haven't had uh, created our database yet. Uh, if you, you also notice that we have several uh, databases already here. Okay, so to our to add or create our database, uh, select the databases folder, right click on it, and then select add new database. And then let's just name it task manager app. Okay, now we have our database. So uh, just to make sure we can right click on the server name and then click refresh. Okay, so now we have our database created. Next is, what we will do is, we will create our task table. So this table will be uh, the table that we will be using to, stay, to save or store our uh, task data. Okay, to, to create our table, just click on the tables folder, right click on it, and then select add new table. Okay. So for this one, uh, there's two options or two ways you can create your table. If you are already familiar with uh, the DDL or the data definition language using SQL, then you can do that using this. Uh, you can use this code or syntax to create your table. Uh, in our case, let's just use the design view. Okay, so there, there will be two columns that we will use to store our uh, task. First off is ID. ID is what we will be using as our primary key or our main key. If you are familiar with the idea of primary key, primary key is uh, what uh, identifies a certain record in a table, in our table, okay? So this is, uh, usually uh, this would be also uh, sort of used as a reference later on uh, as we... Uh, deal with our data okay so by the de by default uh, it's already been filled in by the designer and then you can select the name of the id which in this case is just typical id then the data data type would be int and then uh, we will also need to specify it as a primary key so how do we do that in this properties uh, section or pane we have this uh, option so by default it's already been set as primary key okay then we will also need to set it as an identity so identity means that uh, this will be the main identifying uh, column and then it's also uh, it will also be an auto increment column which means that every time you add a record this uh, data will be incremented okay it uh, it would start with one and then when a new record is added then two and then so on and so forth okay so 
let's set this is identity property to true to set it as an identity type okay next we'll add another column so in this case let's the actual content of our task let's just name it content and then for the data type let's select uh, let's let's just select nvarchar because there are so many data types uh, when it comes to the string types uh, there are also several options you can have uh, nchar lim limited to 10 characters you have n text which is like uh, text with unlimited uh, size and then there's also uh, nvarchar and nvarchar max it's just use nvarchar max for now and then let us check this not uh, allow nulls allow nulls unchecked which means that of course a task would need to have a content in it okay next is is done next is done column so for is done if you uh if you go back and look at our uh data here or the task class that we're using we have this is done we will be uh mapping this also okay and then for uh, since the is done our is done uh, property here for the task is a boolean but we don't have an equivalent a data type for sql server then the closest closest equivalent would be bit which means it has only two values either zero or one zero would be equivalent to false and then one would be equivalent to true okay and then Let's also not null set this as not null and then let's set is set it to default zero. Okay. Now we have uh, completed the set of columns that we need for us to store our task. Okay. Now let's change the table name to task. Okay. And then now to actually create the table. Uh, we have to click this update button okay and then for this one this would be what will be uh, generated and created okay and then let's just click update database and we'll wait for a few seconds and then it should be generated okay now if you notice uh, our table was successfully created now we have a table here uh, named dbo the task okay so we have now set up our database and our table next we are going to add our uh, reference to the ef core library so to do that on our project let's right click on our project and then click manage new get packages okay and then click the browse tab and then here let's search for entity framework core okay okay so you can see that there are so many uh, results with regards to entity framework core what we're looking for is the sql server so since we will be working with our sql server database okay so let's uh, click this one we have here microsoft that entity framework core that server let's click that one and then here on the right side let's click install so we have the version this would be the latest one let's just leave it at that and then let's click install okay and then we have this uh prompt here so this will be uh also the rest of the other libraries and dependencies that uh, uh, entity framework needs okay let's just click ok and then click accept and then yeah the package manager should install all of the necessary libraries so if you look at the output uh, pane or window yeah, we have here you have it has successfully installed several of uh, several li libraries that uh, entity EF core needs okay so now that we have that let's just click save here oops nope you don't need that let's just save all okay now that we're done with adding our uh, 
EF Core library next is we will be setting up our uh, entities and our context or our actual database uh, configuration so that we can use or make use of our uh, database. Okay, let's close this one. So uh, for now, or I mean, currently in our index page, we have been uh, using this uh, internal task class. So now we will be, or we will have to move this into a separate uh, location or folder so that we can get a little bit more organized. So here, I will do that here. Okay. So what we need to do is... Uh, right click on our project and then select add and then new folder and then let's name this models okay and then here you will add a class which is named task okay so now this uh, class which is named task will now be will, will, will now become our entity or our entity class okay this one will this will be the class that we will be using to uh, uh, to make use of entity framework. Okay. Now, uh, earlier we have created our task table, so now we need to create a mapping of the columns of our task table to our task class. Okay. So now to do that, we'll just have to add our properties. Okay. So, first off is the ID, okay? So, by convention, ID is like a default uh, uh, field or property that indicates its ID or the primary key for uh, the class, okay? Next is, let's add the content of type string, okay? And then, lastly, sorry, lastly, the boolean is that okay so now we have our uh, entity task so we'll, we'll just call this as an entity ta an entity class okay of uh, type task okay now our index page we will need to modify all of the things uh, or all of the methods that uh, make use of our task class okay so that we can start utilizing our uh, entity framework uh, connection, okay? So first, let's just remove this task class. We won't be needing this anymore as we have already created a separate task, a class or entity, okay? But before uh, moving on, first we'll need to have or we need to create a database database context so this is this class will be uh, what a entity or ef core will use to make or to query or to make uh, a whatever uh, manipulation or uh, or actions or methods that we need or functions that we need from our database okay so let's add uh, here we have already a data data folder so let's just remove these two classes we won't be needing them this one also okay now let's add our context let's add a new class then let's name it uh, task manager app context click add okay now for us to actually make use of ef core we will have to inherit from the db context class okay Let's just pull in our ref, uh, dependency. Okay, now we have that. Next is uh, we need to set up our class to make a connection to our uh, SQL Server database. And to do that, we need to override, sorry, we need to override a specific function named on configuring. Okay. Here, uh, in this method, this is where we set up uh, connections to our database. Okay, 
Now, to determine the connection, I mean the connection string to our database, uh, what we can do is click on our uh, ta I mean or our, our database on SQL Server Object Explorer, and then look at the properties window, and then we will be looking at the connection string property. You notice that we have there here connection string, and then this is the value of it. Let's just uh, select all of this uh, value and then let's copy it and then here we will use that here we will use the connection string that we copied uh, there and then we'll start with options builder dot use sql server and then uh, we will pass in our connection string okay and yeah that's it Next is we will need to have or to add or to map our uh, class so that we can pull in the data from our task table. So, and to do that, we will have or create a property which is of type DB set. And now using the task, task uh, model. Okay. So, we might get confused for now because we we have a name clash with a different uh, class task class from a different library which is the threading class so we will have to be more specific here and then we have to select the task manager app that models the task okay let's select that and then let's close this so now let's name this task okay great now we still have a problem because we have an error here saying task is an ambiguous reference because it might be referring to two different uh, classes of task. So to uh, remove the uh, ambiguity, let's uh, use a different uh, name name for this a namespace. Let's say models is equal to models task manager app that models and then here. Let's use models that task okay now we have set up our context in our class and then we should we should be able to connect and pull data from our database okay let's head back to our index page okay now here first let's just fix a few of these errors so now since our task uh, is uh, sort of a different format than or column names then this one we don't need this we will have to change this one into that uh, hold on we have a problem with our model okay so this one is referring to a task now we will have to pull in a uh, different namespace just like the one we had an issue here with our context okay let's just use this one let's copy that and add it here okay now since we have that let us change this one to refer refer to the uh, models namespace okay so we have models.task okay and then this one also models.task again let's change this one models.task okay now uh, where do we have the the error with the task here this is referring to that content okay cool next is there are, we have so many uh, errors here so let's just uh, fix the let's fix the parameters for the methods so this one is also referring to a different at uh, class task let's add the models let's append it that should fix the errors okay then a confirm delete models at task and then the delete so we need to append models the task okay 
cool and uh, we have also this error since we have changed the name of the uh, actual property name that will have to be changed also which is the content property not the ta uh, task content okay this one also we need to change this into content property and then this one would be just content okay and models dot task okay that should fix the issues okay cool what else we have also this one task that should be that content okay okay so now we have fixed uh references to our uh, different property i mean the the changed properties now what we will do is we will have to add a separate task for pulling all of the task data from our database okay let's add here a method void uh, load task okay this method will load data from our database and that we will need to use or have a reference to our database context so to do that we have to use uh, dependency injection so to use dependency injection get that at checked db context factory okay have a reference to ef core and then let's name this idb context factory no db factory okay I think it's an interface yes okay let's remove this one should be referring to an interface okay hold on still have a problem get it factory i think we still need the internal type check context factory or context factory context factory what's the problem you may be missing something Okay, so uh, we missed something indeed. So we need to specify the context that uh, we'll be using. Okay, task manager app context. Okay, let's refer to that. And then, yeah, we're all good. Now we have access to our database via EF Core. Okay, so here. We can call using for db factory 
is equal to db factory dot create db context and then from here we can now uh, start querying our data uh, our data from the database okay from our task table so to do that it's task is equal to db factory dot task dot list okay we should be uh, loading it to our task collection okay that we have here tasks okay cool okay, let's try run this okay and hope it works oops we have an error no is this ah yes okay since we have deleted already this file we we don't need this anymore and now we, we might have forgotten something also since uh in our index page we are injecting this we need to set up that dependency uh dependency here in our uh injector okay so we need to add that in our dependency injector uh db add db context factory of type task manager app context okay that should give us access to our db context factory here on our index page okay and then we need to call this method uh, during the initialization uh, phase of our page okay and to do that we need to override a specific method which is named on initialize okay and we will call that here load task okay let's click save hit save and then let's run this up again and hopefully this would work hope it connects our server and we have an error okay so now exception race that is likely due to transient failure consider enabling transient error resiliency so let's view the details let's see successful connection was established with server but an error occurred during the login process okay let's just stop this for a minute and let's check our connection string back here context let's check our connection string ah, i see now we have our password here it's all asters we need we need to uh, uh explicitly set our password here so for this connection this is my password okay and then let's try running this again and hope it works okay cool now our index page has loaded but we don't have uh, tasks it's because our table is empty uh, as of the moment since we haven't had or we haven't added any data yet so now let's do that let's use or make use of our uh, database so we need to modify our methods for saving the actual data to the database okay now here we have here we need to add it here okay first off is saving a new task this section so we need to modify and let's see we will start using our db context for db factory is equal to db factory dot eight db context okay and then to add a new or to save a new data or new task we will call db factory dot task okay dot add and then our task 
and then to finally uh, uh, to actually save the data we need to call dbfactory dot save changes save changes okay and then here let's uh, remove this and let's just call the load task to refresh our a list of tasks okay now let's try this let's run this again and hope that we can actually add a task We're back in our browser. And we have our index page. And then we should be able to add a, ta a task now. Let's buy series. Click save. And then here we have our task added. Now let's try refreshing. Okay, let's click the refresh button. Yeah, just to make sure. Yeah, we have here. Now let's try stopping our app. And then let's run this again. We should be expecting that the task that we just added a while ago should be loaded up. Okay. And great, yeah, we were able to successfully save our task to our database, okay? So that's our save function, okay? We can also confirm if the data was actually saved on our table. We can right-click on our table here in our Object Explorer and then View Data. It should load up whatever data that is present on our table. So we have here our first task. Okay, let's close this one up. Now we need to modify also our edit. Now we have to make changes to our edit function or uh, saving our edits, okay? First off is we need to find our uh, we need to find our task that we will be modifying. So to do that, we need to have also access to our factory. Our DB factory is equal to DB factory. Let's that again DB factory dot create DB context. Okay. Then here, we will query our database for the task that we will be modifying. Okay. To do that, we need to task is equal to dbfactory.task and then dot find. Okay. Find is a method that would uh, accept the primary key ID that we are going to be looking for. So in this case, we need to have the reference to our current task dot id oops task dot id okay and then if our task is not now then we can make the changes Do that, just set task.content is equal to task content. And then to actually save the, our changes, we need to call dbfactory dot save changes. Just like what we did here when we add a new task. Okay. And then Let's run this and hope that it works.
Okay, let's try editing this task. Some changes and click save. Cool, now we have our uh, task save with our changes. Okay, let's just refresh, make sure that it has actually changed or modified. Cool, that's great. Next is, what else do we need? Confirm delete. Okay. So we need to modify our delete uh, function. In this case, again, we are going to be using our DB factory. It's equal to DB factory dot data. DB context. Okay. And then we need to take a hold of our task. Since we have our task here, we have already been passed a task, then we can just do db factory dot task dot remove our task. Okay. And then again, finally commit or uh, actually do the deletion we'll call save changes again okay let's run this save first and run and let's test out our delete a uh, function Okay, now let's try deleting this task. Let's confirm yes. And then it's gone. Let's try refreshing just to make sure. Yep, there's nothing loaded here. Let's try adding again some task. Okay. Chess. Dogs. Uh, okay, let's try deleting this one. Wash the dishes and then click yes. Then let's refresh. Yep, it has been deleted. We can confirm that our delete function has been or is working. Okay. Great. I think we have made use of EF, EF core for most of our methods. Ah, we still have a missed one flagging our uh task as done okay this this method so we need to modify this make updates since we have already our task we have this one we can do is update this one okay we, again we need to take hold of our db factory var db factory equal to factory dot db context then here we need to uh, call db factory dot update our task and then db factory dot sorry factory dot save changes okay now let's try running this again and see if it works Okay, let's try flagging this one, this 
this task as done. Let's click done. And then it's crossed out. And let's refresh. Yep. We are now able to flag our task as done. Let's flag this again as done. Click refresh. And yep. I think we have moved our uh, done method to use the uh, EF core. Okay. So I think we have completed modifying our code to make use of EF core. Great.